This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at southtownhyundai.ca. It's time for Overrated, Underrated with Ryder and Lisa. Underrated, making lists. Do you ever do it? Not really. It's just so satisfying Mm. to cross things off. You feel so much more organized. And it doesn't have to be physically pen and paper. It can be the notes section of your phone, everything you have to do that day, deleting them throughout the day. Just it feels great, feels eh? It feels amazing. I highly recommend it. Even if you have like three things you have to do that day, write them down and then scratch them out. Well, especially if, yeah, the uh, fulfillment of scratching and and deleting is enough to get you to do stuff that you would normally push off, push off, push off. That uh, That alone is reason enough to get a list going. Even if it's like rooms to clean in the house. Mm-hmm. It, it could be anything. Groceries. Write them down in the notes section of your phone. Delete them as you're walking through the grocery store. I love it. Okay, well, I've never really made a list as far as I know, so I'm just going to go ahead and believe you because you seem so passionate about it. Yeah. And I will agree to terms that that is uh, How underrated. How do you get things done? Uh, I just wing it. Okay. I kind of like start six things at once and just see what happens. All right. Yeah. Do you finish all of them? Never. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with overrated. When you're younger, the desire to be older, like (laughs) in all the freedoms that come with it. Once you get there, it's overrated. And also, I think this goes both ways. We all want to go back to our childhood, but it wasn't that easy. I know. I look at like your daughter in grade five and I was like, I have no interest in that math homework. I would not want to do that again. Or like the idea of trying to mesh with the popular kids or you know letting a crush know you're interested but not being cool enough for them to like you back or like there was just so much about being a kid that actually kind of sucks do you remember having a crush on someone and it just absolutely consumed you like nothing else in the world mattered Mm -hmm. and then they just never wrote you back (laughs) or they started (laughs) dating one of your friends and you're like this is hell yep Yeah, fair enough. Don't want that back. No, and like getting told you have to go to bed at a certain time, like beat it. Anyway, (laughs) so all in all, I would say the idea of wanting to be a different age. Thinking that the grass is greener on the other side. Yeah, it's overrated. Just enjoy where you're at. There you go. All right. So you agree? Yeah, I do. Perfect. Wow, that's the first time we've agreed with each other. We should make a list of other things that we agree no. on. Play 107. Hey, can you explain to me what Blue's Clues like is all about? I've heard about it a lot. But. So you were just a little too old for it. Thanks. It yeah. came out in 96, so I personally was six years old. And Steve Burns was the host of it until 2002, until... Uh, He was just ready to move on with his career. He said the reason being, he's like, I had male pattern baldness. (laughs) Everyone behind the scenes was moving on to new careers. So I just felt like it was time. Sorry, when did it start? 96. So I would have been 14. Yeah, I was already like hanging out with my Italian model girlfriend by then. See, exactly. But to a lot of millennials, it was huge. Right. So basically the show is about Steve, who owns his animated dog, Blue, And he has to try and unlock the puzzle. The dog has left a bunch of clues. Okay. So you go to the mailbox together. You open up. There's a mail song, which a lot of millennials. Yeah. It never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. When it comes, I want to wail. Wail! It was so wonderful. But Steve did leave the show and we didn't really get any closure until yesterday. Yeah. Celebrities like Kevin Durant shared it saying, I, I, I didn't think I needed this, but I did. 25 years later, we got a video from Steve. Yeah, I read a tweet that said, Steve is proud of me and says I still look good and you can't tell me nothing for the rest <laughs> of the week. So here was just part of his, I guess, like closing speech to give people that closure that they didn't even know they needed. Here, exactly. Here it is. I guess I just wanted to say that after all these years... I never forgot you. Ever. And I'm super glad we're still friends. Thanks for listening. You look great, by the way. He has a very good delivery as far as like he's speaking with 
the kids, but it's a message for adults. Yep. So I saw a tweet that summed it up perfectly. They shared the video and titled it, This is Incredibly Sweet, a perfect intersection between media for different generations, speaking to adults in a childlike way Mm -hmm. that is completely pure without trying to be cutesy or condescending. And that's so true. Pure. Yeah, it sounded like that. And to all the millennials that watched that and kind of forgot about the show, they kind of just went, oh, thanks, Steve. Yeah, yeah, thanks for the reminder. You're proud of us. Uh, it's interesting because I'm sure there are a lot of parents, too, that, like, I missed it because I was in the middle yeah. window. I bet, like, m- you know, 10 years older, my brother would have experienced it when his kids were watching the show. Exactly. So, yeah, a lot of people were touched by that video yesterday. Man, is there a better time in the history of the Internet to put out something positive I know. that people can just smile and feel content with and not think about everything else. We shared the video on Play 107's Facebook page. Go check it out. Some, something good. Woo! Brought to you by A&D Tutoring. Wonder, learn, grow. For more info, visit andtutoring.com. Play 107. I hate murder hornets. Mm-hmm. I hate them so much. Have you ever seen one? No, but I see pictures of them and okay. people hold them in their palm after they're like dead, obviously. Mm-hmm. And they're huge. They're just as wide as somebody's palm. Yeah, they can be like the size of a small bird. Disgusting. Anyway, there's a French beekeeper. His name's Dennis. He finally came up with a trap that will stop them from harming his bees. Like mm. he owns all these bees and then they come in and they just destroy the hives. And kill all the bees. Stupid murder hornets. I hate them. I hate them so much. They don't have any natural predators either. That's what's so scary about these murder hornets. Well, now they got this guy. Yep. So he made this sugary bait. It uses a funnel. So larger hornets can't get out, but bees can easily escape through tiny holes. Okay. So he's just killing them all off. And he actually won a prize. And now he is selling them to people all over the world. Amazing. He's trying to help stop the spread of these... Awful, awful murder hornets. I wonder if after he catches one, he says, more like murdered hornet. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. Tell me something good. Uh, My story is about a bassist named Darren Wall from the band Greyhawk, who was at a Boise music venue called The Shredder when he noticed a confrontational man in the crowd. His name uh, was Ethan Bird, or is Ethan Bird, 26-year-old, who was reportedly pointing at the crowd from outside, pretending to shoot people with finger guns. What? And so they were aware of this guy. His band hadn't taken the stage yet. Him and another musician went outside to just kind of monitor mm-hmm. the situation to make sure that like the bouncers knew not to let this guy in or whatever. So it it led to a confrontation, and then they saw Bird go to his vehicle and grab a gun and was walking back in towards the music venue. Uh And that's when this bassist jumped into action, tackled the guy, ended up the gun went off when they were wrestling, and he got shot in the leg, the, uh, the bassist from this band. But he did stop the guy from going inside, and then the police showed up and arrested the guy immediately and you just look at some of those other situations that have shaken down Mm -hmm. at nightclubs at you know music venues when people walk in with a gun and they're a lot of concert goers it can get very ugly very quick so obviously people are hailing darren wall the bassist from the band greyhawk as uh, a hero in this situation for jumping into action did he pull a dave grohl and get on stage and still perform even with a cast on his foot (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but uh, here's what I hope, that everybody searches out Greyhawk and gives them a listen, supports the band after totally. it's such a cool move. Tell me something good. So maybe if people keep on getting the song wrong and this pot keeps growing, we're going to have to start implementing Tough Talk. <laughs> Just be mean to our listeners. Yes, exactly. 13, Figure it out. 1300 bucks up for grabs here. We're going to play Ryder and Lisa's $20,000 Play That Tune in a second. There's a guy who is taking Tough Talk to the next level. I found him online. Uh, Matty Dovids is his name. Okay. And he pretty much just does instructional videos, but he trash talks you while he does it. <laughs> and it's uh, just a terrific concept. Really jealous I didn't think of it first. Uh, do you want to hear how to fold a fitted sheet? From an angry person? Absolutely. Here it is. 
Another mean and helpful life hack. I know your dumb ass doesn't know how to fold a fitted sheet. Start with both hands in the corners with the long side up. Put your palms together. Grab it with your left hand. Flip the right side over the left side. Now we're just going to do the same exact thing, you stupid idiot. Palms together. Flip it over and fold the top third down. Now we're going to lay it down, idiot. Fold it in thirds, moron. Fold it in thirds again, idiot. If it doesn't look like this, then you f***ed it up. So there you go. If you're looking for this guy online, Maddie Dovids. Uh, we wanted to know what's the dumbest thing you ever got in trouble for when you were in school. When I was in elementary, I honestly didn't really get in trouble. There was twice. So the first time... I was in front of the school instead of behind the school at recess. Like, you know how they have the supervisors that are in the back near the playgrounds? Ooh, badass. I know. My friend Jamie and I were playing in the front yard, and we had to write lines. I was like, this is stupid. Well, probably closer to traffic and unsupervised. Yeah, okay, that's one chat. It's not go home and write lines and get your parents to sign it. Like, come on. (laughs) Fair enough. And then the second time I got in trouble was junior high, and my fashion at the time was wearing um, overalls, but undone, so they were hanging down. Both sides undone? Yeah. Oh. I know, it was weird. I'm from the generation where we had one side up. Oh, okay. So my generation, we had both of them down. Okay. And I had like boxer briefs underneath and a tank top. And so I got sent to the office because my underwear was hanging out. I was like, but I'm wearing underwear underneath these. Like, this is fashion. And what kind of uh, boxers would they have been? Like plaid numbers? No, they were like briefs. Right. Oh, cool. It was cool. Thank you very much. Uh, The dumbest thing I got in trouble for was something I didn't do. And I ended up having to miss recess for like two months because of it. You always tell this story. And I do think that it's very interesting. A kid cut his pants. Cut his own jeans or what were they? Corduroys? Reebok sweatpants. (laughs) What do you mean? He cut them into what? He just cut a huge line down them. Like... A strip down them, oh. and then because his entire intention was to blame me. Oh, <gasps> that I, is so awful! And so then he told the principal that I cut his pants, and uh, they're like, "Well, until you admit to it, we can't punish you. So you're just going to have to miss recess." I was like, "That is punishing me, stupid Craig." I tried to get him on the show a couple years ago to talk about the incident, and he said he actually still feels bad about it, so at least there's that. We're getting so many texts. About the dumbest thing you got in trouble for? Yeah, April wrote it. I'm sorry, Amanda wrote in saying, in grade three, it was April 1st. So all the kids in the class decided to hide in the bathroom on the teacher, but one of the kids' fingers got caught in the door and complained to the teacher. So all of us had to run 20 laps on the field Uh. after that. Happy April... I can't talk. <laughs> Hopefully they when they yelled that at the teacher, they got her happy apple rules. What's rules. wrong with me? Happy apple rules. Happy apple rules. <laughs> oh, I was like walking down the hill with my friends and we were like headed up to uh, to go meet some boys. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And my principal drives by and he's like, do you ladies need a ride back to school? <laughs> This is while you were skipping. You should have been like, why aren't you at school? (laughs) Back to school season, we're asking you, what's the dumbest thing you got in trouble for in your school years? It's 780-784-7107. April texted in saying, not me, but my brother tried to bring a shopping cart into his grade 8 classroom. Like, I can just picture how annoyed a teacher would be. Yeah. And the what look, are you doing? And the look on his <laughs> face, like, check out what I'm doing. Look what I found. <laughs> <laughs> I have a story for you, things you get in trouble for in school. Yeah. I had a shirt that was one of those uh, seven up t-shirts that said on the front, make seven in the back said up yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my teacher made me change my shirt because my shirt just said up yours on the back. <laughs> and I went and changed it to one that had a big piranha on it that said bite me. Oh my me gosh. What grade was this, Catherine? I was like 13. <laughs> I like the move of taking, going and changing the one shirt you got in trouble for for another one that you'd get just in much trouble for. Right. In just as much trouble for, I should say. Victoria texted in saying in grade one, we were sitting in an assembly. A boy behind me pulled my hair and wouldn't leave my hair alone. I gave him two warnings and he kept going. So I punched him in the face. I got suspended. Who suspends a grade one student? (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, what do you got for us? It, I was in grade three, and, you know, it, just the season, my hair was very staticky, and I thought to myself, oh, well, if I could just sprinkle some water on it, it'll be okay. So I hid, and I went into the bathroom, and I guess I looked suspicious, and my teacher followed me in there, and she caught me just kind of splashing water onto my hair, <laughs> and she said, Jessica, that's gross. You're heading to the office now. And I said, but my static hair, she's like, I don't care. You're disgusting. You're heading to the office. <laughs> Isn't that what? insane? I feel like when teachers were in bad moods, they would yeah. just send kids oh. to the office. Like, And I'm a teacher, and I get it, but I would never do that. I, it was embarrassing. I felt terrible. Like, <laughs> Well, especially after you explain yourself, it would have been kind of weird to see a kid like sneak out and then just like petting their head in the bathroom. Yes, like, oh, I'm just getting my hair nice and sleeky smooth. Like, no, I had staticky hair and it was bothering me. So, it was distracting anything, you in class. Yes, I was being very solution-based. So I don't know what her problem was. Awesome. Thank you for the call. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks. Have a great morning. You too, girl. Bye. I had another one that was really bad in grade six where I acted out something really inappropriate in front of the whole class Mm -hmm. on top of a toboggan. And I had... Oh my gosh. I would hate you in school, I think. It was a GT snow racer, actually, to be specific. (laughs) And the... Teachers like go and do that in front of the principal. And no, I was like, what? and I had to. I remember the sound of the GT dragging down the tile floor in my elementary school as I was walking to absolutely embarrass myself in front of the principal, That's knowing awesome. I had made a huge mistake. <laughs> My best friend knew I had a crush on this guy in class, and she dared me to do something stupid because. Everyone knew I was stupid at that point. And um, so I go into the boys' room because we had separate lunchrooms. He was the first to come in. And the moment he walked in, I flashed him. (gasps) And he ran out (laughs) and told the teacher. And I ran out into the other, into the girls' room and totally lied. But she, of course, knew it was me. And I got in trouble for that. And maybe you should have. (laughs) Um, Diana's text is awesome. First time texter. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for contributing. We love it. She says, we had a dress code in junior high where you couldn't show your belly button. So I wore a crop top and just put a Band-Aid over my belly button. (laughs) Awesome move. So this is interesting. Apparently, they are creating an actual Moe's Tavern that uh, you'll be able to go and check out. And it's actually in a city that is called Springfield. So why wouldn't they embrace it? So that obviously Moses from uh, The Simpsons. Mm-hmm. I thought it could lead to a chat about like where from a movie or a TV show you would like to see or visit in real life if possible. Even if it's out of a cartoon, that's fine. I wouldn't mind going to uh, Willy Wonka. <laughs> Yeah, that's the a good chocolate, answer. I didn't think of that. The chocolate factory. I mean, besides the whole potentially dying right. from the original movie, but man, did the food look good. You also suggested, uh, like just off air a minute ago, Kevin McAllister's house from yep. Home Alone. But I love that. Also, wouldn't you be afraid of the traps? <laughs> Like, well, the pizza just looks so good in right. the first scene, you know. <laughs> um, I would like to go to which you can go and visit. Actually, the Shit's Creek Motel. Oh, it was up for sale recently, yeah. wasn't it? I've seen, there was somebody on my Facebook recently that traveled there and was like posing in front of it. I got to see the full house house when I was in San yes, Francisco. But there's an interesting story behind that. The people that actually live there, because it wasn't filmed inside that house. It's just the exterior that's part of the film. Right. The inside of the house is a set. But the people that live there cannot stand how many people come and take mm. selfies in front of their home? It must get so old. When, like San Francisco, the housing prices there are insane. Can you imagine paying $3 million for a house like that? And then you're constantly berated by people who mm-hmm. want pictures on your front step. Or maybe you just want to take your garbage out without a bra on. <laughs> and there's people, you're in the background of somebody's Instagram post. Well, I was full bosom. <laughs> Exactly. Seven eight zero seven eight four seven one zero seven. Where would you like to visit from a TV show or movie? We got April's text saying Coyote Ugly's Bar. Love oh. you guys. Uh, this first time texter says the cave from Richie Rich. Oh my God! Another person just wrote in. Matt just said would love to see Richie Rich's mansion. Mm. 
It is a popular one. Your daughter has said that exact answer before in the past, too. If I could hang out anywhere, it would be Richie Rich's mansion. So I have to correct myself. It's opening at the Springfield Mall, not in a town. It's oh. in Delaware County, That's Pennsylvania. Still, still super funny idea. Yeah. I'd go to Moe's. Like, I would travel out of my way a couple hours just to go to Moe's Tavern. Lisa says, I want to go to Yellowstone, please. Cassie said Harry Potter school. Jesse says Neverland. Salem from Hocus Pocus says Megan. People are very passionate about where they want to hang out. How many people want home a band from this place for life? Yeah! Yeah. Oh, come on, everybody. This bar is like a tavern to me. Sorry, home. I'm taking your caricature down from Mount Lushmore, and I'm pulling your favorite song. Out of the jukebox. <gasps> it's raining, man. Yeah, not no more, it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So um, good. Tara wrote in saying, do you remember the movie Blank Check? I want to go to his mansion. He has the water slide that goes from his room to the pool. Ooh. Life goals. And it's interesting because I just watched that recently. And so did she with her nine-year-old. She's like, uh, I hyped it up big time. And she clearly did not get the same joy from it that I did at that age. It's so surprising. Some of the movies that you think are going to withstand the test of time that just don't hold up. Okay. Angie's text, where you'd want to visit or hang out from a movie or TV show, Amityville House. <laughs> Well, no chance. I wouldn't mind like the wall from Game of Thrones just because I'd like to see the view. Mm. You are so high up and you got scary on one side. I want to see what's going on on the other side. Right. I don't know. I always wanted to be on that wall. Uh, you know how they've made Harry Potter school? Right. They should have some white walkers. Yeah. Just roaming around. That would be so cool. You get cool. to shoot them with bow and arrow. Yeah. That'd be fun. You've actually been to the place that was on your bucket list to see. The, the Stanley Hotel in Colorado is the hotel from The Shining. Oh. You know, when Nicholson, when he acts it through the door, here's Johnny, you know. Right. It's a, it is a beautiful hotel, and it's, it's legitimately haunted. Uh, you know, it's been there since, like, 1880. So you would recommend the hotel from The Shining? Yes, 100%. Stay in room 202. I'm, we just got a text in from someone saying that that's where they want to hang out, so I'll tell them that. Yes, yeah, so stay in room 202. It's notoriously the most haunted, and it is the room that Nicholson stayed in when he was filming at the hotel. What's shaken down on September 14th? The Apple event. Mm -hmm. They're going to be unveiling the iPhone 13. What are we expecting here? I'm sure there's been some leaked information, but this is what I want the iPhone 13 to have. This is the 13th iPhone. Mm -hmm. Can it float? So I don't have to get a device to put my phone on to then film videos. To take a selfie. More (laughs) like it. (laughs) What would you suggest? Uh, I just want it to vibrate harder. No, that's not <laughs> what? funny. What? Brighter. What? Because I don't like when it's on ring because it's too loud. It's but obnoxious. I, I yeah. like the vibrate. I like hearing it when I have it set to that, but sometimes the vibrate is not hard enough, so I just want it to vibrate harder. Good answer. Thank you. <laughs> my true wish would be that it doesn't slow down my current phone as soon as the new one's released. <sighs> Which they manage to do every year. I don't believe in a lot of conspiracy theories, but that one. A thousand percent. (laughs) If you're just here for the money, it's fine, too. I get it. Your next shot at $1,600 with Ryder and Lisa's $20,000 Play That Tune tomorrow morning at 7, 10 a.m. Three chances every weekday. I wanted to find our youngest coffee drinker. We have a few coming in that started at uh, 12... But as Chandra said, I had six sugars in mine every time I'd have one. So does it even count? (laughs) I guess it still does count. That's just a hot milkshake at that point. Um, Now, your daughter has two little brothers. Mm -hmm. And they both are obsessed with coffee. Really? I didn't know this. Yeah, if their mom leaves coffee around, they'll just chug the whole thing. Charlie was telling me the other day <laughs> awesome. that her mom has to like keep the coffee up high. Otherwise, they'll just like go to town with it. And I told her mom, I was like, why don't you just start like leaving around decaf? Right. <laughs> if they love it that much and cry. Yeah, let them have Give it. them some decaf. I've actually heard from, um, from baristas who have admitted things in the past. Like if you're rude to them, sometimes they'll pour a decaf really? and serve it to you. Yeah. That's I, why you should just always be nice to your baristas. Sure. Came across a stat that says 35% of Starbucks coffee drinkers are between the ages of 12 and 17. What are they drinking from Starbucks? Is it coffee? Well, it says of their coffee drinkers. So my guess is caffeinated beverages. What I find most surprising with this is 
how can a 12 year old afford Starbucks? Like, I couldn't afford a $1 Slurpee when I was 12. I I'd have to, like, steal a dollar uh-huh. out of my dad's change pocket after he went to bed. Like, because so I could have a Slurpee the next day, let alone a $7 Starbucks. Yeah, and it's not like they can steal money from their parents because everyone just uses their credit card. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody has money. Yeah. They're charging it. Kids got it rough these days. That's why they need the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.